I think this must be on. Activated, so try to watch. Not on. <coughs> Pardon me? Usually there's a Oh, I see. Hmm. Well, this has been left here. Shall I go check? Uh, maybe I'll just uh, call them. <laughs> We're on, are we? Okay. I'm no longer infectious, so you don't have <laughs> don't have to worry. <laughs> And I'm active. I think my, I think yeah, you're on. I'm on. Yes. So I'm going to run through the questions that are in Langland's article. Uh, this is this is a different way, actually, of looking at the things that we've done up until now. Uh, question one: He formulated everything in terms of L functions. Uh, the way we talked about it earlier, it was functoriality. That was, I mean, the two are of course closely related, but he um, um, formulated his questions in terms of L functions. Question one is about Automorphic representations and L functions. And um, he, by the way, I didn't say this, but question one also it wasn't necessarily a quasi split group, it was an arbitrary group, reductive group. And uh, he, the question was is it possible to attach local L functions and global L functions and local and global L factors to automorphic representations and their local constituents uh, so that? Uh, the product of these little local L functions um, has, has analytic continuation and has a functional equation. That was it. And so, uh, by the way, these are all questions. I don't know if I put a question mark at the end of that, uh, question one, but uh, everything was a question. Um, so, um, uh, I think we have talked about it, but I'll just remark that um, uh, in principle, the, the question one was to be able to define L functions, local L functions and local epsilon factors to attach them to actually the representations. Um, as you know, there's a closely related way of defining, um, attempting to define L functions and epsilon factors, um, Artin L functions and Artin epsilon factors and that's not what Langlands was thinking of although he quickly uh, when he got to functoriality he quickly uh, um, pointed out what the relationship between the two would be uh, but in any case these the, the, the existence of these uh, low, these representation theoretic L functions and epsilon factors um, he knew it was coming for GLN and um, he and Jacquet uh, had this book, as you know, in which they constructed these, uh, actually constructed these L functions for GL2 and also for a division algebra. But I'll just remark that um, Artin um, introduced um, global. So Arden didn't, he, he, uh, he was talking about representations of a Galois group, 
Um, and he didn't, uh, he, inter he needed epsilon factors because they satisfied a functional equation and they were required for the func expected functional equation. Um, but um, he, he didn't think, I don't know if he thought of it, but he didn't uh, define um, um, local epsilon factors, he defined global epsilon factors. Um, Um, epsilon, S, and R um, for representations um, R from the Galois group of a number. This would be a number field. And um, this would have finite image. And um, uh, so his, uh, he, he had global epsilon factors for his L functions. These would be his L functions, R, um, L, S, R. And um, he, he needed them because he wanted to state the global functional equation, but he didn't. We, we wrote down Langman's question one, uh, that the epsilon factors should be a product of local epsilon factors, uh, which are uh, one almost everywhere, so it's just a finite product. But the local epsilon factors should be more complex, more interesting perhaps, um, um, in that they also depended on an additive character. So Dwork, I guess, was the person uh, who was maybe in the 50s, proposed a local product. So as I say, these are not quite the same as what Langlands was proposing for his automorphic representations. These are attached to representations to Artin representations, representations of the Galois group. Um, but Dwork suggested that there should be um, honest to goodness local epsilon factors. Um, such that the product over the finite set of places S in which this given representation ramifies um, um, would um, uh, have local constituents, local <clears throat> factors, which depended on an additive characters, an additive character psi V, uh, but such that the product was Artin's epsilon factor. So that's what Dwork did. He yes. So it could just be uh it could just be something which have to produce the functional equation. That that's exact that's right. That's it. That's what it's there for. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So for the Riemann data functions it's like that value of gamma of S uh S over expected. No, no, it's one. It's one in that case. So, so Langlands uh, again. This was this was a um, this was a departure from the convention. The departure, the the convention, I think, of Artin and Dwork probably was to uh, the, his L function would be a product over all primes, um, including the ramified ones. We started off by doing it just over the unramified primes, but that was it. And then then uh, adding the Archimedean factors was something else. Uh, a, a, a bunch of gamma functions, and um, but Langlands uh, recognized, I, I guess, uh, or uh, felt that no, no, these things that you write, and and by the way, the other the people before Langlands, I think they would write lambda, capital lambda, of s uh, um, r, rather than l of s r. L of s r is being the product of the finite primes, and lambda is what you get when you throw in the are these Archimedean factors. But Langlands had the point of view that these local, that these things at the Ar uh, Archimedean places really were the analogs of L functions and uh, they should be called, counted as such. And uh, uh, he put them into the, his global L function and he just wrote that as L. So that includes, that includes so, so it makes the functional equation, of course, a lot simpler. There's no gamma functions in it. They've already been put into it. The only thing that you need is this epsilon factor, which is a... Is this not the same as uh, if you had L upper S's? Or is this low, lower, uh, sorry, upper S was the one that the 
That's right. And then the lower S was exactly this epsilon factor. Uh, upper S was the product, uh, infinite product over all unramified places. Yeah. There was something more that uh, we have been talking about L lower of S, and I'm following Langland's conjecture there, where I, I include not just the ramified primes, but also the Archimedean factors. Right. And so the product of the two of them I'm calling L of S uh, pi or L of S R. And um, uh, 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 that uh, that's the Langlands convention, and the uh, it, his his question was: uh, Does can you do that in such a way that it has a functional equation rating uh, relating r of l of s and l of one minus uh, say <coughs> our contragradient as uh, Pramat pointed out? Uh, well, they're not; they're almost the same. They differ by what they're going to call a global epsilon factor. No, 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 they're, they just come in for the, to the functional equation. Langland said, it's not clear exactly what their role is. I do remember his phrase, actually. He said, it's not clear what their role is, but we know better than to leave them out. And so, it, I mean, it, they, they perhaps seemed a bit ad hoc, uh, I, I think, I think uh, to everybody but Langland's. Um, okay, so in any case, uh, Dwork worked on this, trying to break up Harton's yes. Yeah. Oh, so C is um, CV is an additive character from um, um, uh, what are we calling it? Uh, G N. So it's a that's right. Um, um, so it's a it's a character from an additive character from F V to uh, C star, I guess, or to G M. I've been thinking about that, so I do what well, we'll call it that, um, as such that, uh, and 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 such that the product over all V. And it's, it's it is a finite product, uh, but which because the um, epsilon factors will not at the at the unramified places do not depend on this, um, but the such that the product over all v of psi v, which is psi, and this is a an additive char this is a character I guess on the Adels modulo into c star such that, but it's only a finite product, and um, such that this is trivial on F on the Adels. So the global thing uh, that the finite product of these epsilon factors do, does not depend on psi, um, but the local ones do. And um, I've never been really comfortable with all of that since I grew up with real groups. But you really do, it is appropriate to take uh, um, uh, real groups. You're just talking about the additive group of reals. And then we do have an additive character, e to the i lambda x. But p addicts, you got to pick one. It's, it's a little bit more serious matter. You have to actually pick an additive character to get the additive, to get the the additive dual group uh, in the sense of local harmonic analysis for the additive group of the p adic field. Okay, so in any case, um, Arten introduced these things. He worked on them. He was, turned out to be quite a tricky problem, actually. He, he, uh, his, he, he introduced his global um, epsilon factor, and it's only going to be a finite product over the ramified places. And uh, I guess I guess we're including the reals in that, although Arden, a, a, a dwarf would perhaps not have been doing so. Uh, he would have put them in separately. Mm -hmm. um, but he proposed a local product for these ep for these Arden, uh, for these Arden epsilon factors, um, and this motivated. I think that this motivated Langlands in question one. Um, 
um, to conjecture. I mean, I'm not sure how much Dwarf conjectured and how much Langlands conjectured, uh, but Langlands conjectured automorphic. As we wrote in question one, he conjectured automorphic um, epsilon factors to the extent that automorphic L functions and their local constitu local L factors are to the extent that they're different from Artin's. And as I say, for GLN, they really are a separate thing. Um, Langlands knew that they were coming. And so to conjecture automorphic um, epsilon factors um, with local um, products as above, as above. So Langlands, that, that was what Langlands wanted. Um, what, um, however, he realized that he could not, um, that there would be a big hole in his questions um, if he did not, uh, because a lot of, as you'll see, the later questions had to do with relations of these things to the Artin epsilon factors and L factors, uh, L functions. So um, he realized unless he could solve this problem for that the Dwarf was working on, there'd be a big gap in his, uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that, there'd be a big gap in his um, questions and, and uh, conjectures, if you want to call them conjectures. So he worked on that. Um, um, so what am I saying? I'm saying that, uh, uh, so this motivated Langlands to conjecture automorphic L factors with local products as above. Um, but he worked so, but he, I mean, as what he wanted as background for that, he worked hard on the problem Dwork was working on, namely just for the um, um, just for the Arden epsilon factors and the possible their possible local existence. Um, of local um, 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 Arden epsilon factors and L functions. And he used uh, ideas of Dwork. The, the Dwork's work had come earlier. But he, he actually did uh, want to, jet for reasons that will become clear presently, he did want to generalize them, not just for um, uh, representations of um, um, the local Galois group, um, um, uh, so I'll say, and its generalization. Um, So uh, where they fit in uh, with uh, Dwork and Arten, they were represent the local things that Dwork was going to uh, use to parameterize these, these little RVs, to parameterize these local epsilon factors together with the additive characters. So um, uh, Langlands really wanted the, its generalization to representations RV, uh, not just of the local Galois group, but of the local they groups. So of um, they groups. Uh, global they groups, um, F bar over F. Um, that's what R would be. Uh, for what Langlands was trying to set up, and uh, their 
their local um, uh, um, constituent, the lo the, their local analogs. The they group of FB over F, uh, FB bar, excuse me, um, over FB. So the Vey group, I'll have to say something about this, not, not today, but uh, because the Vey group plays a fundamental role in these conjectures of Langlands. Uh, the global Vey group maps onto the global Galois group. I'm going to write uh, uh, Galois group of F bar over F. And the local they group um, embeds up to conjugacy in the global they group, and it, um, it, it there's a surjective map of the global they group onto this, and what um, what should amount to be a what should amount to a surjective mapping? It's actually a mapping, continuous mapping with an open dense image uh, in the in the local case. So Galwa group of F V bar over F V. So we know that these things um, map into here up to conjugacy. And Langlands uh, realized after he it was pointed out to him by they that there were these more interesting groups and uh, that uh, uh, his conjectures should apply to as well. So he was working on trying to do what Dwork did um, for um, uh, global and local epsilon factors for representations of the Vey group. This is not surjective, it's surjective in real it's almost surjective in the p-adic. It's, it's open and dense. It's a, you, the, the only difference between the p-adic case between this and this is that you don't uh, take the algebra, you don't take the totally disconnected, um, uh, uh, you don't make it into a compact group. You only require that the Frobenius be a cyclic group rather than its closure in here. Uh, anyway, representations of this are then going to include representations of this. Yes? So opening is a degenerate basis for from epsilon factors for the for Galois representation and epsilon factors for the Yes, yes. That's right. Both local and global. Right. And why uh easy at this point why he was more motivated to have this generalization? Um no it isn't I have to get to the other questions. So these, these the Vey Vey group will be a prominent part of the later questions. Um, uh, the base, I, I can, I mean, the basic role of the Vey group is to parametrize representations uh, of local groups. You take homomorphisms of the Vey group into the uh, L group, and they're supposed to parametrize the representations of the local group. Um, they don't quite do it. They parameterize L packets, and this is the, this is the content of Langland's later uh, questions. Although he, he he didn't quite have it all thought out, I, I suspect um, um, it was phrased more more generally. It was phrased less precisely than that, but the, the actual assertions of what what the local later local the later questions meant was. <coughs> soon figured out by Langlands and, and others. So anyway, this was a terrible job. This was, this was, uh, you got a, apparently got a proof of the existence uh, of the generalization to they groups from Galois groups, the generalization of what Dwork was working on, namely a product of the, the global epsilon factors into local constituencies, uh, a constituents, a finite product, um, so the local construction um, of 
this was not part of his um, paper. It, it was he was working on this when he was writing up his Bachner article. So the local construction of these things for representations of the Ve group um, was 300 pages long. <laughs> it was really tough, and it was never published. Must have been pretty discouraging. Um, uh, this this is reference eleven in the Bachner article, and then Deline came along, as you probably know. Deline later found. Um, a much simpler um, global proof. Of the existence. Um, of local epsilon factors. It, and um, I, I mean, he, of course, read Langland's um, Bachner article and started thinking about this. And uh, so that, that wasn't too long afterwards. This is in the Antwerp proceedings, the proceedings of the Antwerp. I guess that's Springer. Uh, yes, Springer like the notes. 349. 1973. Okay, so that uh, those difficulties with art and um, epsilon factors uh, were resolved. Langman's just um, quoted, I think, his 300 page paper for what he needed uh, for the existence of those local epsilon factors. All right, so that's question one. And then, yes. Um, there's a there's a big tradition in number theory um, uh, when um, you want to prove fact things about local number fields. Uh, often um, it's a lot easier to prove uh, uh, don't prove a lot just pr don't prove them specifically for for uh, piatic field, but to um, assume that these are um, uh, try to prove the analogous theorem for a number field. And then specialize it to the piatic field. Um, class field theory is of that nature. Uh, we'll have to say a little bit about class field theory. There are global proofs. Uh, there are local proofs of all of the local class field theory, but I believe my understanding is that the global proofs of which they they're all which also exist are simpler. So that's a big tradition in number theory. People like to have a global, local theorems are often easier to prove globally and then the specializing them to, lo to the local completions of the given number field. Um, uh, but people want both. I mean, they, people want local proofs as well as global proofs. Okay, so Langland's questions two and three. Two and three. So uh, as I as I said, um, I, I think I didn't indicate this uh, last time, but question one applied to any reductive group, not necessarily quasi split. Is it applied to as the general connected reductive group over a local or global field. So Langland's questions two and three, I'm not going to state them formally, um, because they concern um, um, a local and a global, two is the local and three is global, um, correspondence uh, for representations of a non-quasi-split. Uh, 
um, inner twist. Let's call it an inner twist. G prime um, of a quasi split group G. So uh, it's a car, it's a, he proposing the uh, a correspondence. So, I mean, arbitrary reductive al uh, algebraic groups, um, you start with a split group. Yeah, from that, you can do something called an out, as I've mentioned, an outer twist of it. Uh, twist the Galois action by automorphisms of the Dinkin diagram. That'll give you, that's a way to classify quasi-split um, and a definition, really. A, a quasi, well, no, it's not a definition, but it's a way to classify quasi-split groups. But then there's a whole bunch more, and those come from further twisting of the Galois action on the quasi-split group. Galois twisting is just where you get a, you get a group over F, um, by specifying the Galois action on the points in the group over F bar. And so if you've got a quasi split group, you've got a Galois action on the uh, group GF bar, and then you, um, you change that Galois action so -called by, by a so-called twisting. And um, what you need in order to do that is a, a co-cycle, something in H1 of the Galois group uh, into the group of inner automorphisms uh, of the uh, quasi split group, or rather the points in the quasi split group over the algebraic closure. That's a, a, that's a mouthful to say that, but it's a, it's a well defined process in the classification of algebraic groups. It's called an inner twist, and it's a way to get all algebraic groups, reductive algebraic groups over a number field F or over a local field um, in terms of quasi split groups by this process of inner twist. And by the way, uh, um, doing this by a so-called one co-cycle from, uh, from, um, from the Galois group into the group of inner automorphisms uh, of, uh, of the quasi-split group of points within the algebraic closure, that is classifying of those things is very closely related to class field theory. So these things, these general um, non quasi split groups, these inner twists, uh, their very existence, at least, or their very classification, is abelian class field theory. A great, one of the great things that Arden helped finish uh, in the earlier part of the century. In any case, uh, well, uh, his questions two and three concern um, a local correspondence <laughs> for a quasi for uh, um, for a non quasi split inner twist G prime of a quasi split group. Um, in other words, questions if you know the representations of a quasi split group, then uh, is there the question is is there a way to construct them for arbitrary groups. Uh, okay, um, so I'll just mention, so I'm not going to state these things formally, it's just uh, sort of just, as I've said, the questions three, uh, two and three, what, two was local and three was global. Um, but I will mention um, such a special case, uh, uh, um, such, uh, how should I say, such as um, the basic, so what he was thinking of, uh, he was also writing this book with Jacques Hay uh, at the time, and uh, so such as the basic special case um, of quasi-split group, an inner twist of that quasi-split group that consists of G equal GL2 and G prime, the multiplicative group uh, of a quaternion algebra. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, <coughs> over. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just going to take a drink of water. I'll be right back. 
Um, so, uh, such a special case is G equals GL2, G prime, the multiplicative group of a quaternion algebra e over the given field, right. either local or global, um, over, say, a local field FV, or global field. And the uh, question, questions two and three, were answered completely and in a very nice uh, way. Um, Jacques A. Langlands, the last chapter of Jacques A. Langlands. So this was treated. In chapter 16. Of Jacques A. Langlands. I make you too. In their book, Springer, big book, big long book, um, Springer Lecture Notes. It's, it's called uh, Automorphic Representations of GL2, I believe. And it's, it's no, they, they didn't. Uh, no, the notion of automorphic, rep, the, the name automorphic representations came later. It must be automorphic forms on GL2. Anyway, it's Springer Lecture Notes 114. 1970 by the trace formula. Actually, the, the uh, oh, that, version that was uh, uh, introduced by Selberg. Selberg was never quite clear exactly how much Selberg had proved, but Jacques Langlands restated the trace. The problem uh, it was for the trace formula was not for compact quotient, that would have been the case for the uh, quaternion algebra, modulo the center, but for GL2, <clears throat> it does not have compact quotient modulo GF, and the Jacquet and Langland stated actually very clearly exactly what it would be, although they didn't prove it, but it would have been known or, uh, and, and proved by Selberg, but perhaps not written up. So by Selberg's um, Trace formula. Applied separately. <laughs> to G prime and G. And then compared. So they compared the geometric sides of the two trace formulas, the sides that have to do with orbital integrals, um, and uh, showed that they matched and thereby were able to deduce uh, the uh, corresponding um, uh, reciprocity law or correspondence proposed by Langlands. Uh, from the resulting identity of spectral sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so that's that's what question two said. It said that if you know the theory for uh, quasi split groups, can you? They were questions. Can you deduce the resulting theory for all groups? namely inner twists of quasi-split groups. These questions, questions two and three, are now regarded actually as uh, part of something different. Uh, questions two and three um, are now regarded as something quite, that's still in the process of being 
uh, figured out, but uh, or established, but uh, the, as part of Langland's later. Je vais avoir, je vous en as part Maybe. <laughs> of Langland's later conjectural <laughs> theory, <laughs> not functoriality, really. Um, uh, Langland's um, <laughs> later <laughs> conjectural. Uh, theory of endoscopy. So theory of endoscopy. Um, which I guess was put forward in nice. various stages. Um, 1975. Hello? 1980, say. Turned out to be quite complex and, and interesting. It wasn't just a direct correspondence representations of one group to another group, uh, <clears throat> an injection, which is what yeah, one had for the case of these two groups. Oh and yeah, March brain. Um, it's <clears throat> in terms of what are called uh, alpacas. What are you going to do? And, uh, uh, this can be conjectures <laughs> for this were put forward by Langlands. Um, you got to talk about this. Oh yeah, group. clearly, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so uh, that's questions. Yes, three. So questions four and five. <laughs> and seven questions. Questions four and five. Yeah, la, la couture. Um, I think it's so nice. It's joli, right? I know, right? Uh, it's dramatic, became, but it's simple. Local. We've talked about global, but local and global. Functoriality. No, le blanc. Je veux ça, but en blanc. No, je veux ce blanc. modèle, mais en blanc. Mm. Like, j'aime. Like, uh, like, I like all the design and everything. Where, where, just where, where, if they can elf. make it white. Uh, I want to wear white all day. Time. So I'll just uh, state these. Uh, we haven't stated local functoriality. So question four. I mean, um, so this would nowadays be called Langland's principle. Yeah, maybe. So je me change, ou bien soit I wear whatever is the nicest. Of local functoriality. Yeah. Um, if, so now because they look like <clears throat> excuse me because of questions two and three you can now they're supposed to cover all groups in terms of quasi split groups um okay Note is uh, oh, note I, I still uh, want to wear. Really thought nice. maybe somebody out there was uh, raising an issue with I what I said. Say. It doesn't seem to be the case. Um, I mean, I could so questions four I and five. Um, inter yes. Uh, so question four is uh, if so. So as I say, yeah. um, um, questions two and three in principle were supposed to treat the case of inner twists. And so, oui, c'est uh, It would cover everything in principle. So if G V, <coughs> quasi split groups, it'll be nice in pictures and stuff because mm -hmm. lui va porter grand mou blanc, so it matches. Um, lui aussi va porter son grand mou blanc. Over a localization. Uh, yeah, I think I will. Yeah, because if I can find someone to do that, I'd want it. Of F. Um, if I can find someone to do that. Um, um, so I'll just, the I'll, it's what we've written, written before. We then need um, an L homomorphism. So okay. in the earlier part of the book, before you even started uh, 
putting forward these questions, Langlands introduced okay, He didn't call it the dual group. He called it, uh, maybe he did call it the dual group. Okay. Anyway, he introduced that earlier. So, okay, c'est bon. Uh, Parce que oui, je vais toujours so par, par, yeah, Rho just Rho prime prime déjà, is a, a, what we now call an L homomorphism between, from the L group. Yeah, no, exact. G to the L group of G. And so a local. Oui. L homomorphism. So oh, okay. No, Abdullah is about that. Oh, homomorphism oh, oui, should be analytic on the G hat, the G prime hat, and that it uh, oui, oui. Uh, should also, that's a local, an L homomorphism, L, L homomorphism means it's um, uh, analytic, but also that it commutes with the projections of these two things onto the Galois group. These are just like the global one, these are semi-direct mm -hmm. product of Okay, for what this as a would be the same in the local case as the global case, but okay. with a different group, the local Galois group, semi-direct product. Of yeah. That okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. I want the best. The so outer twist is that in defines your, the quasi twist. On va just faire Senegal. Um, any case. So if this is a local home of our, okay. homomorphism. And by the way, um, Langlands, yeah, uh, this time did not in the local, local Galois group. After I saw the dress, I'm like, local oh, baby. L group is a semi-direct product of the hat, the Galois group. <laughs> it's, people have realized now that you're better, you, you probably yeah. are better off, you can do whichever you want, but you're better off to have the Vey group yeah. there. The Vey group projects onto the Galois group, and uh, the Galois group. Is what acts on here. The, it depends. The it depends. The people si often. The booking. Si n'a pas de booking le matin, but il va nous donner toute la journée. Mais si il a booking, non. Semi-direct bon. direct product of the vague group, with the understanding that it acts on G hat through its projection on the Galois group or its image of the Galois group. Anyway, Cesar. that's just an aside. Um, and so this is a local yeah. L homomorphism. So question, this is a question, we've got to put a question, got to phrase it as a question. Is there um, yeah, a natural? I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Je pense que si les gens, comme, je sais pas, si ils ont des événements, quand on est des parties, si ils ont des événements, pareil. Langman um, knew that it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, what, like what happened for GL2 and quaternion algebras, it was oui, more complex than that. So it was just a correspondence um, IV IV. Like starting from May. So, so this would be from, let's say, let's write pi GV prime to pi yeah, yeah, no, no. GV. So these would be, we're not even going to insist that they're unitary. These are just irreducible yeah, equivalence exactly. classes of irreducible rep representations mm -hmm. of G V prime. So we so we yeah, she shot that look at the all the good ones are like our look, look. G V. By, so so what, I, what I mean by that is G prime of yeah. F B. A local group. And G of FB. Okay, so is there a correspondence attached or even defined by this from representation of one to the other? Um, such that. Okay, so I've, I've mentioned that this was all set up. Everything. Six thousand dollars set up in terms for of pictures. Um, Langland's for pictures. question one. I'm like, you're not even like filming that, me. That you're just taking my pictures. We're also set up. I didn't write. Après, them, but they set up so that the L he's very cheap, but like his pictures are okay. Like, and not the epsilon bad. factors no. proposed in question one. No. No. Okay, so she's trying to say to trouver medium. And same thing here, such that is there a natural correspondence such that. Uh, the <clears throat> L functions proposed in question one 
L of S okay. IV RV equals L of S uh, IV. So my RV, remember to define an L function, you need a representation of the L group. So RV is supposed to be a representation of the L group of D, V. And so okay. uh, as we had in the global case, were they nice? It's supposed to be equal to the composition of rho v prime okay. with rv. And similarly with the local epsilon factors. Exactly. Um, so, so the epsilon s phi v. Yes, yeah, sure. Psi v. Oui, parce que videograph, je pense que peut-être j'ai um, trouvé. Il y a une qui, celle qui me croit que she said that hers is, was really I good, so I. je vais essayer de contact pour elle. Um, Puis après, um, il y a une amie qui s'est mariée, elle a dit son videograph, um, il était très bien. And I'm and looking at his videos, Rosie they're very, Pine. very nice, very clean. Are so je vais écrire celui-là pour Ivy. Pour, de, pour lui demander à ma chicasse. For every finite dimensional representation, so the baggage that comes with these things, of course, we've got the finite dimensional representation of the L group. And we also, there's not mm -hmm. a canonical, in general, there's not a canonical additive character. So it's a, it's a little bit, uh, always a little, little, I don't know if I'd call it messy. It's just the way it, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this yep. depends on a choice. Uh, the local aspect of it depends on a choice. Okay. Additive character. Okay, so well, for every for every finite no? dimensional representation, R V of G. Quoi des photos? V. And no, les gens que je suis en train de parler are black. Non-trivial. I'm looking. I'm looking for Africans who know um, what an African character. wedding is, so they know, you know, so that they know how to take pictures. <laughs> um, psi v of f v question mark. Okay, so I'll underline this just to emphasize that this is one of these major questions. Okay. Is there a correspondence? Is the local? Is there a correspondence? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Je veux IV, yes. Cool. Thanks. IV prime. Thanks. Okay. That's good. Pardon me. Okay. So for every pi v prime, there's a pi v. So this this thing such that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, you assume mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. like question one that you've got these local okay, L functions and you assume you've got these local epsilon factors. Okay, that's good. And, uh, Just this was meant to be almost uniquely characterized, meant to be uniquely, almost uniquely characterizing the map. I will say more about that um, on Monday. Okay. okay. No, it does not. Okay, no problem. It is. It's, a, it's an injection. It really is an injection. So that's pretty good. You don't get that in general. Uh, you What you get is, yeah. uh, well, it's subtle. And it works out to be very nice. It's, uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's the origin yeah, of what are those L packets. So I will describe that. I'd say something about that next time. Yeah. Okay. 